Hey, we have here another integral from the MIT integration B2010. This one was problem 16. We have the integral from zero to one of dx over x to the fourth minus 13x squared plus 36. Okay, the thing that jumped out for me first was this. This is clearly factorable right here. And if I go down that road and we break this up, we're probably heading towards partial fractions. And I know I usually avoid that. I don't know if there's other methods, but I think I'm just gonna do the partial fractions this time. You guys can let me know in the comments if you found other ways, but I'm just gonna go for it. So to start factoring this out, we'll keep our bounds, but now this is gonna, this can be factored as x squared minus nine times x squared minus four. But the nice thing here is we can just fact, we can break this up again with difference of two squares. So let's rewrite it again. So we'll write x squared minus nine as x plus three times x minus three. And we'll write x squared minus four as x plus two, x minus two. Because we don't have any square terms, I think it's gonna make the partial fractions a little nicer. So here we've set up our partial fractions, noticing just because it's just first degree in each of these, so we don't need, we just can do a single constant value for the value we wanna find in the numerator. And what I'm gonna do is we're just gonna do the cover up method on this. It's actually not too bad, but there's just a little bit of number crunching involved. So for the cover up method, we'll just start with this first term. What I'm gonna do is plug in the value that's gonna make this zero. Okay, so it's minus three. And then what I do is I cover that up. I take the minus three, I plug it into these, plug it in everywhere else, and we just figure out what we have. We have a one here. We'll do this one all the way out and then we'll blast through the others. But so if I plug minus three in here, we're gonna have minus six for this term, minus one for this term, and then a minus five for this term. Multiplying that out gives minus 30, but remember we have a one, so we're one over minus 30, and so our a value is just gonna be minus one over 30. Doing the same thing for the next term, we'll plug a three in here, okay? We plug the three into all these other terms, and we multiply that out, it's gonna come out to one over 30. What'll happen when you plug this in, you'll have six times five times one is 30. One over 30 gives us our one over 30 here. Then we'll plug a minus two in here, and when we do that for our c value, we're gonna have one over 20. And then for this last term, we're gonna plug a two in here. And when we do that, we're gonna get for D, we're gonna have minus one, one over 20. Okay, so now we're gonna go, I'm gonna go ahead and integrate and it's gonna be pretty easy. We just have these constant terms and these are all gonna be natural logs. So like for the first one, we're gonna have minus one over 30, natural log, absolute value, X plus three. Then next we'll have one over 30, natural log, X minus three. Then one over 20, natural log x plus two, and then minus one over 20 here, and this is gonna be natural log x minus two. I ran out of space for my balance, but we'll bring it over. So then here I'm gonna factor out a one over 30. I'm gonna group these together using the log property. So I'm gonna write this natural log as x minus three over x plus three. Then here I'm gonna factor out, we'll take a one over 20 out, and then we're gonna have by log properties again, we'll turn this into a fraction. So we'll have x plus two, the minus allows us to divide by x minus two. And we're evaluating this all from zero to one. Now, before I evaluate this, I think I'm gonna deal with the absolute value first. As you'll notice between zero and one, this is always gonna be negative, right? Like if you plug a one in here, you get minus two. So the absolute value is gonna flip it. So what I'm gonna do is remove my absolute value here and I'm just gonna reverse the sign on this. Instead of being x minus three, I'm gonna write it as three minus x. And then I'm gonna do the exact same thing here, because again, if we plug a one in, and everything from zero to one, this is gonna be negative. So I'm gonna reverse the sign on this and write it as two minus x. Okay, so now I'm ready to evaluate this. We'll plug a one in here. So I'm gonna have one over 30, natural log. Plugging a one, we're gonna have two over four. So that's gonna be natural log a half. Then next we have our one over 20. Plugging one, and we're gonna have three over one, so this is just gonna be natural log of three. Next, we need to deal with this zero. Now notice when we plug a zero in here, we end up with three over three, but that's gonna be one. Natural log of one is zero, so we don't have to worry about that. And then same thing here, right? We plug a zero in, two over two is one, natural log of one is zero, and so all the zero terms are just going away. So this is basically the final answer, this is fine. Actually, I think I'm gonna just rearrange it a little bit to how they have it in the answer key. So they wrote it as one over 20, natural log of three, minus sign, one over 30, natural log of two. Just noticing one half is the same thing as minus ln two. So I just bring a minus, like this is like 
to the negative one and we bring the negative one off front and that's how we get that minus sign. That's it, not a bad problem. So I chose two partial fractions, but I chose kind of an easy one so I didn't have to do too much work. So we'll stop it there. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a great day.